Hello there, this is Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk. And uh, this is the uh, MSX, Sony MSX um, computer I'm working on at the moment. I've made a little bit of progress on it so far. As you can see, what I've done... Let's see if we can just get that to focus in a bit better. There we go. What I've done is I have removed all the uh, video RAM ICs, the um, 16K of video RAM which uh, let me just find something to point with there we go which is uh this lot here all these i've taken them off off the board and i've installed these ic sockets in the place i've done that so i can um swap in some uh, new ram so some new ram uh, what i will say is i've worked on lots and lots of computers over the years um mainly British stuff, you know, Sinclair Spectrum, C64s, Amigas, things like that. I have never in my life come across a board quite so horrible to work on as this. I usually pride myself on being able to do repairs without doing any damage to the actual circuit boards themselves. It's very, very rare that I lift a track or do any actual damage to the board. But this board is horrible. It is the worst board I have ever worked on in my life. Not only... Uh, all the ICs, the, so the solder is very old. I mean, you can't give it much blame for that. You have to uh, flow a load of new solder into the uh, into the pin sockets before they'll um, suck out. It is absolutely terrible from that. But you can't really blame it for that. That's just old age. What you can do is what the actual board's made out of. Now, it's easy to see on this um, bit of the uh, power supply section here. If you can see there, you can see the brown inside. And it's green on top. This type of circuit board is basically made out of, it's basically paper that's impregnated with a resin and then has copper fitted on top. Um, it's most like used in most cons cheaper consumer goods, um, like TVs and things like that. Problem with it is, is it's very intolerant to heat. If you get it too hot, it just starts to carbonize and uh, break up and you'll lift tracks and through holes will come out it is horrible horrible stuff to work on you not hardly ever see it in computers I mean, even look at this this is a humble zx spectrum 48k zx spectrum board and that's made out of fiberglass with the um, copper on fiberglass and i mean you know these boards they're horrible to work on you do lift tracks occasionally on them but that is about 100 times better to work on than this thing. And this is made by Sony. You'd expect better from Sony, even in the early 1980s. You'd think you'd, you'd expect better than Sony. I had a real, real nightmare of a job to change them um, few ICs there. I lifted three tracks, just doing them eight ICs. And one of the problems is, when they originally fitted the... Um, I, all the ICs on this board, everything you can see soldered on the board is exactly the same. They put the IC, even the resistors, even the capacitors, everything. What they did is they put them through the board, then bent the legs over. So every one of the ICs there had the legs bent over before it was soldered. So I had to heat each pin up, straighten it, apply more solder, suck it out. It must have took me about four hours just to take off them eight RAM chips. I managed to get all the RAM chips off without damaging. In hindsight, really, I should have just cut through the chips and taken the pins out one at a time. But I wanted to save the chips because I wasn't sure how many were bad and how many were good. Anyway, that's beside the point. I managed to get them off. I managed to get the IC sockets on. I had to put three bodge wires on to replace the uh, tracks that I damaged doing it. I took all the ICs that I got and one at a time... I tried them in this. This is um, that 48k Spectrum board. And the last RAM I see on it has been replaced by a um, socket. As this uses the same RAM at the same speed as the um, MSX. Um, as the MSX's video RAM anyway. Um, I was able to put the chips one at a time in there. Power up the Spectrum and see what it did. Now, out of the eight chips, them five work fine. I left the Sinclair running about 30 minutes each time. The chips stayed reasonably cool. I mean, they always run a bit warm, these, but they stayed reasonably cool, and uh, the Spectrum ran. These three, however, let's just uh, grab them. Um, 
these three however two of them within probably 30 seconds of the um, Sinclair booting up it booted up all right brought the Sinclair logo up the copyright screen but within yeah probably 30 seconds we had um, graphical corruption on the um, screen that was uh, them two there that one and that one that one when I tried it in there um, all I got was the um, black screen with a white border um, the computer wouldn't boot to anything so that's them three are obviously fail well them two are failing that one's dead so that's where I'm at at the moment um, I have precisely one spare um, four double one six unfortunately I have a shed load of um, 4164s. I've got buckets and buckets of the damn things. So what I'm planning on, but none of them are tested. They're just all pulls I got a lot years ago and um, very, very cheap. Um, but most of them I think are probably pulls. They're all mixed up. So what I'm planning on doing is making a little adapter board for to fit onto this um, Spectrum, the Zerk Spectrum board which will allow me to try 4164s in that socket there. Basically what it will do is it will uh, lift the 12 volt line, lift the um, minus 5 volt line because neither of them are needed, and strap the where the 5 volt line comes up at the moment on the um, 6 double one, uh, sorry, the 4 double one six. Um, that is an unused address line on the... Um, 4164 um, and if you pull that high it just will ignore it it won't matter so the 5 volt line already comes up on that pin so it just needs bridging across to the um, adjacent pin and powering that with 5 volts and everything says that the MIC should then work so I'm going to try that I'll make a little adapter up so I don't have to modify this board at all and I'll try plugging some um, 4164s in there and um, see what happens. If I can get two of them that, two or three, yeah, I need three, don't I? If I can get three of them that are stable in the spectrum, I'll strap, the, I'll cut off the excess pins, strap the um, five volts across the top of the chip, and I will um, plug three of them in there and see what happens. I can't guarantee it's going to work. It's just a bit of an experiment, but um, I can't lose out on it. If not, I think I might have um, a, scrap, a couple of scrap boards up in the uh, attic that have got um, six double, uh, four double one sixes on them which I can rip three or four off. Um, I'll try them in the Spectrum, prove they're okay and then try fitting them in there. Uh, I don't know what I've got that's got them on in, up there so um, that's just a, uh, a possibility if this doesn't work. Okay I think I've rambled on long enough for now so um, thanks for now and uh, goodbye.